In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. We offer this Mass for the eternal rest of Arthur and Melva Kinmonth. Before we celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifests your almighty power, Above all, by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses, taking some of the spirit that was on Moses. The Lord bestowed on the seventy elders, and as the spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. Now, two men, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, were not in the gathering, but had left the camp. They too had been on the list, but had not gone out of the tent. Yet, the Spirit came to rest on them also, and they prophesied in the camp. So, when a young man quickly told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, Joshua, son of Nun, who from his youth had been Moses' aide, said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. 
But Moses answered him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets. Would that the Lord might bestow his spirit on them all. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich, weep and wear over your impending miseries. Your wealth has rotted away. Your clothes have become moth-eaten. Your gold and soon have corroded, and that corrosion will be a testimony against you. 
It will devour your flesh like a fire. You have stored up treasures for the last days. Behold, the wages you withheld from the workers who harvested your fields are crying aloud and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and pleasure. You have fattened your hearts for the day of slaughter. You condemn. You have murdered the righteous one. He offers you no resistance. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna into the unquenchable fire. And if your food causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna where their worm does not die, and the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We see in the first reading how the Lord 
shares Moses' spirit, the wisdom of Moses, to seventy-two elders. There were seventy in the tent and two out of the tent. And in the gospel, we see that there is someone driving out demons in the name of Jesus. He doesn't belong to the tent of Jesus' disciples. He's not a follower of Jesus', of Jesus but he's driving out demons in his name. The church is the tent of God. And the church has received the Spirit of God to prophesy, to speak out, to preach, to speak in the name of the Lord. But the church is not the owner of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in the church, but the Holy Spirit works outside the church as well. We cannot claim ourselves as the owners of the Spirit of God. We have received the Holy Spirit when we were baptized. And we have received that Spirit to prophesy, to be prophets, to become prophets of the Lord, prophet, prophets of the Gospel. But we have to be aware that the presence of the Spirit goes beyond the doors of our church. There is action of the Holy Spirit in other churches, in other religions, and we have to be able to see the truth, the goodness, the beauty that other religions and even other churches have. For us to prophesy, for us to preach the gospel, for us to have a dialogue with them. This is the purpose. You cannot start a dialogue with someone. You cannot debate if you pretend to have the whole truth and you approach that person imposing yourself. Jesus is telling us, be smart. Be smart. To be able to preach the gospel, to be able to get in touch with others, we have to be able to acknowledge the truth, the goodness, the beauty that that person, his or her ideas, his or her ideology have. But by thinking this way, we might run a risk. We might think that it is the same to be Jew or to be Muslim or to belong to any other Christian denomination. This is the risk. But if it were the same to belong to this or that religion, Jesus Christ wouldn't have incarnate. Jesus Christ wouldn't become, wouldn't have become man. This is important to know. The Lord has come to show us the true face of His Father, the plentitude, the fullness of revelation. And that is why we must evangelize. We must let others know about Jesus Christ. You know part of the truth. There is beauty, there is goodness in your religion. There is goodness and beauty and truth in your ideas. But for you to reach the full truth, who is Jesus Christ, and to belong to his tent, that is his church, you have to know Jesus. So that's why we are urged to preach. We are urged to, to start a conversation, a dialogue with others. This that happens in evangelization should happen in our daily life with those we love, with your husband, with your wife, for example. 
If you're always claiming to have the whole truth in your relationship with your husband or wife, you will always discuss, you will always argue, you will always fight each other. But if you're able to see the truth that that person has, the part of reason that that person has, you will be able to dialogue, to have a conversation, to yield, and to grow in unity. And you will also uh, make that person listen to you, listen to your opinion. Uh, when, when, when I talk to my sister, I try to, to see the part of, of, of truth that she has in her, in her opinions. And that's why she can listen to me. But if you're always claiming to have the whole truth and, and, and you are prideful by doing so, nobody's going to listen to you. So, I think this is a very important lesson for us. There is truth outside. There is action of the Holy Spirit outside the church. And, and, I, and I have seen that because before um, knowing my church, the Catholic Church, knowing my faith, I went to some Protestant churches. And I could see the action of the Holy Spirit in those churches. But when you have an encounter with the truth, with the tent of God, the church, then you are urged to, to go forth and, and preach the gospel and, and invite others to know Jesus Christ and the church, his church, the one founded by him. And there is just one other thing here in the gospel that I would like to highlight, which is um, the Lord says, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. The Lord is asking us to hate our sins. To fight against our sins. And the Lord also reminds us that hell exists. Hell is not an invention, it's not a parable. It is real. He says, Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. So let us give thanks to the Father for giving us light, for giving us his word, to be able to know his will, to be able to um, guide our own lives and to know the truth and therefore to love him more and more. Let us pray in silence. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, come substantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of love, you know our needs before we speak them. We lift our hearts to you in prayer. Our response is, Lord, help us be more generous. Lord, help us be more generous. That all chosen to lead our church do so with loving compassion and service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help us to be more generous. That those in government service regard all human life with sacred respect. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help us be more generous. That people who feel their life has no meaning receive understanding and loving care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord help us be you. more generous. For all members of our faith community, especially those who are unable to join us at Christ's table. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord be more generous. We pray for the eternal rest of Arthur and Melva Kinmonth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help us be more generous. We also pray for those who, com who commend their needs, concerns to our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help us be more generous. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we trust that you will look kindly upon our intercessions. We ask these things in the name of Christ, our Lord. Lord. As our gifts are prepared, we sing number 523, Prayer of St. Francis, number 523.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. By his suffering, cancel out our sins. And by his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> by sending down your spirit upon them like the viewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread through all the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Charles our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have all, who has fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you through all the ages, we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Lord Jesus has become man to show us the true God, his Father, the true face of God, the fullness of the revelation made by God throughout the history. And that's why we have to preach, that's why we have to prophesy, that's why we have to approach others from other religions, from other churches and to tell them the truth, show them the truth. But being able to recognize and acknowledge the action of the Holy Spirit in their faiths. It is our obligation to evangelize. If it would, it would have been the same to be from this or, or that religion, the Lord wouldn't have become flesh. So let us ask the Lord the strength, the courage that filled with the Holy Spirit we might go forth and preach the gospel. We say the prayer he taught to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not over sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only but say the word, word my soul and my soul shall be Our communion hymn is number 593. Your words are spirit and life, number 593. Your words are 
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen.